MSI is trying to get into the premium ultrabook category, and today we're going to take a look at their PS42. It's a 14 inch laptop, and I'll tell you whether it's good or not. Stay tuned. Okay, let's take a closer look at the build quality of the PS42. So as you can see, I really like this design on the outside. It's kind of like a brush metal, but it doesn't really have any texture to it, but it doesn't really pick up fingerprints, which I really enjoy. And they have their logo here, but it's very subtle. So you can barely see it unless you get a nice reflection on it. I think this is just a really cool design and look. I, I like it a lot. All right, turn to the left side, we've got a bunch of ports here. So you do have a barrel charger, which is really old school, but this is what happens when you kind of go with some uh, other brands like MSI who are still fans of it. You do get an HDMI port, Type-C 3.1, but this gets weird now. This is gonna be the whole theme of this review. MSI makes some weird decisions. So yeah, Type-C port, awesome. 3.1, good for data transfer. It, however, it cannot charge the device. So there's no power delivery there, which is a little bit, well, strange. So there's definitely also no Thunderbolt 3 support. You do, however, get a headphone jack, which, you know, is pretty normal. And you get nice little LEDs here, which show when the power is on and charging. Uh, I'm not even sure what that one's for. But what's cool about these LEDs is they wrap around to the top deck. And I actually really like that. So you don't need to peek over to the side to see them. So really neat design there. Now on the right hand side, you do get two USB 3.1 type A ports, which is really nice. Another type C again, doesn't do power, so you can't charge with this, which is really kind of frustrating, but you do get a full SD card reader, which you know is pretty strange on a 14 inch laptop. And again, MSI is gearing this towards, well, creative professionals, and that's a nice choice to have. And you also get a Kensington lock. Look at the back here, you do have some nice symmetrical grills for the venting system. And what's really neat about this laptop is it does have two fans on the inside, so this actually matches it. Each fan is dedicated, one for the GPU, which is the MX150, we'll talk about that later. And the other one's dedicated for the processor, so they don't share the same heat pipes. That's a really good thermal design here. Okay, turning to the bottom, well, things aren't very pretty on the bottom of this laptop, but still, let's talk about those vents. So again, two fans on each side here, nice symmetrical design, you get your feet. They do have weird things here in the metal, so these are, it's a little thin that sticks up. So this laptop does have some flex to it uh, and that's to prevent that. So when you're pressing down on the keyboard and everything like that, this little ridge and this one in the center here will help prevent the laptop from basically pressing down. So a little weird, but at least it's functional. You have a bunch of screws too and a bunch of stickers. Uh, not a big deal. You do also get some speakers at the bottom edge here. Normally I'd frown upon that, but because of the chassis design of this, you'll see when I open it up, the sound actually plays out of the bottom and through the top too. It's actually very good audio. So don't let these fool you. They're actually better than they look. Okay, opening up the Prestige, and we can see all sorts of cool designs up here. So very thin bezels for you guys who are big on bezel design here. Well, they put very thin ones on this. Now you still get the chin here at the bottom, which is unfortunate, but hey, three out of four ain't bad. Uh, the display itself, 14 inch, full HD, anti-glare, non-touch. So the touch is gonna be a bit of a downside, but you know, MSI surprises me. They always use actually very good panels. So this one too, this is 100% sRGB for color accuracy and 79% Adobe RGB. It's actually a very good display for this. Now, like I said, it's full HD and it's matte, but I actually really enjoy working on this and that's super important. Brightness is good too. It's a little over 300 nits at some points. Not the brightest display out there, but it's definitely, I would say, good enough. Okay, the trade-off with having those super thin bezels though is gonna be, well, that webcam at the bottom. And boy, is it at the bottom. They didn't even put it up here. But yeah, if you're a big webcam user, probably not the best placement. Uh, I wish MSI would have done something different. We did see at IFA 2018, I believe it was Acer had it in their display here and it was very thin. And so they're obviously shrinking this stuff down. MSI missed the boat there. You also get some microphone holes. It's an all right web camera, nothing outstanding, but it works. All right, now looking at the top deck and we get this now familiar design that MSI is using, including their gaming laptops, where they have this sort of venting grill at the top. Uh, also allows the sound to come out to the top too, which is really nice. And they put the power button in the center. A little strange of a design, but you know, whatever, it works. Looking at the keyboard itself, we got silver keys, very large keys too. And MSI does some strange keyboards. I have to give them credit. They have their own design language here and it actually works. I actually really enjoy typing on this keyboard. It's similar to the GS65 gaming laptop, wide keys. They are silver though, they are backlit, but that also means the backlight is only gonna be useful when it's really dark. If you turn it on now, it's just gonna actually make the keys harder to see. Trade off with the silver keys, but the travel is good on there, the click is good. I really enjoy typing on this. 
And let's get to some of that design stuff that's a little bit weird for MSI. So you have the space bar here, which is off center from the entire device. But the benefit there is you get a nice home row key there that's full size. You also get full size arrow keys. And you know, for some people, that's a huge deal, right? A lot of companies sacrifice those arrow keys to move everything over. They didn't, you get full ones here. You also get a function key only on the right side, which you can then use for the power and volume. You don't have one on the left. Again, a little bit of a weirdness, but I had no issue typing on this or getting used to it. Again, coming back to odd designs, let's look at this trackpad. So it has these beveled corners on the top. It's a decent size one. It's a little bit short, but overall it works pretty well. It is a precision trackpad, which is really nice. It clicks well enough and you do get a fingerprint reader built in there. And I'm actually surprised, it's actually a pretty good fingerprint reader really no issue with it. Uh, but again, weird design. So you have the whole keyboard here, then you have the space bar off center, and now you have the trackpad off center from the space bar, and the trackpad's still off center from the center line of the device. So everything's off center, and that's just to me a little bit weird. Had they moved us over though, it would've been probably too far. So weird design choices, not the most aesthetically pleasing, but functionally, hey, it all works together. Okay, let's get to the specification. So this is running a Core i7-8550U. Now that's not the brand new Whiskey Lake that's coming out in a few months, but still, it's a really good processor. It gets very good performance. It's on par with the MateBook X Pro in terms of single core and even multi-core. But I will say the Dell XPS 13 does outperform with the same processor. And that's just because Dell has a very good thermal solution and they jack up the TDP on that processor. So if you still want the best Core i7, the XPS 13 is still gonna be the champ there, but still no complaints, it performs well. Now when it does come to graphics, you get an MX150 GPU and that's partly because it's just no iOS Pro graphics for the eighth generation. It's a good processor. It gets around the same scores as the MateBook X Pro and it'll give you that extra productivity boost when you need it for graphics and even gaming. Pretty solid choice. Next up is storage, so you can get up to 512 gigabytes of SSD, and it looks to be a SATA drive, not quite as fast as the NVMe type. So you're looking at 500 read and 500 writes, which you know is not the fastest out there. It feels okay when you're running it, but clearly there's gonna be a compromise here. So a little disappointed there with the SSD, but it works overall. You also do get 16 gigabytes of RAM. Overall, this results in a pretty fast package. I really had no complaints. So it's just running a full HD display, so the graphics get to push pretty hard. I also didn't really have too much with thermal throttling, the processor and everything works very well. And the fans weren't too loud either. You barely hear them. When the system is just running normally, they don't even really come on. So it's only when you're pushing it for say, gaming or doing a Windows update, you'll actually hear them. Now let's talk a little bit about battery life. So it's a 50 watt hour battery, which is a pretty solid size for a 14 inch laptop. It's rated at around 10 hours. I was getting around seven or eight. I was actually pretty happy with the performance here for battery life. I don't see as much of a problem, mostly because you're just pushing a full HD display, which helps a lot to preserve that battery life. Now regarding software, MSI still packs a lot on there, including some Norton antivirus, which thankfully you can of course remove. They also have their Dragon Center and a bunch of sound stuff. And you know, it's a little bit more than I prefer in an ultra book, but at least you can uninstall a lot of it. And the experience has actually been okay. The sound is a lot better than I expected. It's not the most bassy system out there, but because they're top firing and it kind of comes out of the top of the body there, it actually sounds pretty good for audio. You combine that with that really good display, and it's a pretty good experience for those who like productivity and multimedia. Okay, let's bring it all in. So the PS42, yay or nay? Actually, kind of yay. Um, I really enjoy using this laptop. That is, I like typing on it, I like looking at the display, I like the trackpad, and the audio to me was very good. At 2.6 pounds or 1.2 kilograms, it's also a very light and nimble 14 inch laptop. So to me, that overall experience is just kind of fun to use. Now, there are some issues I have. The Type-C port is just weird. I wish it would charge at the very most. I wish it was Thunderbolt 3, which I really would expect at this sort of price point. That to me seems to be like a major oversight. Now, the aesthetic stuff is a little bit weird, but it doesn't interfere functionally. To me, that's an important distinction. But there's also the price tag here. So this is $1299, where something like the MateBook X Pro with a similar configuration is $1499. So for that $200 though, you're going to get a 3000 by 2000 display on the MateBook. It's also a touch screen. It's also a very good touch screen. You're going to get a giant trackpad. You're going to get much better Dolby Atmos audio. You're going to get a way faster SSD on that thing. You're talking like 3200 read speed. So that extra $200 goes way further with the MateBook X Pro. And to me, that's sort of the bar here. That's one of my favorite laptops. They also have something like the XPS 13, which is also a really amazing laptop, which has a maximum performance, in my opinion, for a Core i7. But if you want to spec it out similar to this, you're going to go up into the $1,800 price tag. But still, I consider it to be a solid option. 
nonetheless, I really like this laptop. I enjoy using it. The typing is good, the screen is good, the trackpad is good. It's very light to carry. So I think MSI is on the right path here. And I wanna give them a little bit of encouragement. I think they're doing some good stuff with this premium ultrabook category that they're going for, but they do need to make some improvements here. None of this stuff is deal killers, but they're important distinctions that I think you should know about. Overall though, pretty good attempt from MSI. I can't wait to see what they do next. All right, so that wraps it up for this review. Now, if you have any questions about the PS42, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. If you want more information about this laptop, we'll have buy links in the description so you can go and check it out yourself. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.